Thank you. If we can hold that for now. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, all right. Um, <clears throat> without, uh, I also wanted, uh, <laughs> we still got to believe it or not, still have a, a couple more quick announcements. Um, one, next month, I want to let you know our program on February 9th will be uh, Mike Stockstill will be here speaking about the history of the Irvine Ranch and its development. So um, he has written a very in-depth book, which is out and available now. He will have that here to sign and sell as well. And um, as a, a former Irvine Company executive himself, he had an inside track on a lot of this and he spent a serious amount of time uh, digging through uh, uh, archival materials throughout California to find out more. So uh, looking forward to that. Also wondering, uh, I'm just going to take a quick poll by hands here. Um, how many here would be interested if we had a program, or maybe even two, depending on, on interest, on the topic, uh, more of a how-to program, on how to research and write local history? That's something you might like to do yourself. How many people would be interested in a program like that? What is the program? Be how to research and write local history. We have a... Okay, probably have a panel of some, some people with some expertise on that up here. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, without further ado, I would like to introduce this evening's speaker, Robert David Breton. Um, he is the uh, former Mission Viejo Mayor and Mission Viejo Heritage Committee member. Uh, he and his family moved to Mission Viejo in 1976. He has served as a member of Mission Viejo's City Council, Planning Commission, Municipal Advisory Council, Community Services District, Community Services Commission, Friends of the Library, and many other task forces and boards. You'd think he liked the place or something. <laughs> as Mayor of Mission Viejo, he formed the city's, the city's Heritage Committee and assisted our own Doris Walker, the uh, late historian, in writing his city's first history book, Mission Viejo, The Ageless Land, and he is currently at work on a new history of Mission Viejo to be published soon. So without further ado, Bob, thank you. Good evening, and thank you, Chris. It's a true honor to be able to be speaking before such an august body. I came here to one meeting back in the 90s with Judy Dieter. I don't, don't know if any of you remember Judy, but uh, uh, it's glad that I'm very, very happy to be back. There can be no separating a place from its past. All the hopes and dreams show up sooner or later somewhere in the landscape. Every design and every decision show up either now or in the future, in the streetscape. As time goes by, the wrinkles reveal the lives lived and reflect the best plans laid on behalf of the future. The present, then, is the result of the past. That's why you're here. The now is a cumulative record of all that went before. That's why local history matters. The past beckons you to enter, to discover your roots. Which way do I have to point this, Chris? Or did I not turn it on? Are you sure it's not the garage door opener? <laughs> our lives better. <laughs> yes. fell asleep. It wants to do carbonite backup. <laughs> <laughs> and it threw everything off. That's because it's a historical computer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
that's a help you begin. I don't know where to stand so that you can see. Maybe I should stand further back. Five. Okay. It was working a minute ago. It was. I, I'm your witness. I saw it. Yeah. Stairs is what I want to do. If we reboot, we turn this off and we'll start this again. Laptops? Okay, now it's green. Oh, okay. I pulled it down and it's green. There it is. There you go. got it. That's it. Okay, it's the first one. All right. So, as I was saying, the past beckons you to enter and to discover your roots. The past unmistakably greets you as you enter Mission Diego. Echoes of the past resound from hill to hill. See, it's changing there. Oh, that's weird. I can see it on the uh, on the laptop. It's changing. Uh, you know, if I touch it, it'll be destroyed. So I, I'm not sure you want me. To. So it's Chris. It's changing on the on the laptop. Okay, we're doing the rest of the program through interpretive dance. I hope you're good with that. <laughs> Let's see if we. If we do that, does it? <sighs> okay. So why is it not? Your laptop's not speaking to the projector here. Oh, there you go. I got it. Yeah. Okay. Slide channel. Okay, now we need From to go the full. Yeah. There we go. Now try it. Okay. Let's try it. Here yes. we go. Okay. Sorry. That's enough. So, the Mission Viejo story is best told from the old fashioned porch rather than in a classroom. As you look out from your rocking chair, can you smell the wild pasture? Can you see the cattle roaming? Can you hear the herd being rounded up by hardy cowboys? Can you see the windmill off in the distance and the old barn next to it? There is a romantic restlessness and sense of wonder embedded in this land. From the indigenous natives to, Sp to the Spanish explorers, from the Mexican rancheros to the Irish ranchers, from the community planners to the hometown settlers, all have been drawn to Mission Viejo by the pioneer spirit of adventure. Yes, these were rough and ready, hardy folks looking for land to tame and a place to settle in the old, wild, wild west. And who could blame them? for wanting to explore the wide open spaces and see what's beyond the next hill, or for wanting to venture into the undiscovered, undisturbed territory and stake out a claim, clear a plot of land and sleep under the stars, or for wanting to plant roots in a veritable paradise halfway between the mountains and the sea, surrounded only by wildlife and wilderness. Now Mission Viejo's signature feature is the Rafter M cattle brand. 
The cattle brand represents the robust character of the early, early cattle hands who worked the ranch, defended the ranch, and rode for the brand. It denotes hard work and it actually denotes the opportunities and limitless possibilities. It, it empowers the cowboy to action. It's, it's an empowerment to action and to press forward with a positive outlook. So the land that we call Mission Viejo was originally part of a huge cattle ranch that covered two land grants, Rancho Mission Viejo and Rancho Tribuco. Here you can see the, the brand actually on the saddle. Actually, Mission Viejo in the beginning was underwater, and we have the uh, fossils to prove it that we've uh, dug up. So, let's talk a little bit about these ranchos. In Liverpool, England was born a gentleman by the name of Juan or John Forster. And he came to California in 1833, worked as a shipping agent in the cattle hide trade at San Pedro and later became captain of the port of San Pedro. In 1837, this is John Forster. In 1837, he married Everybody knows, right? He married the daughter of the, the governor of Mexico, the daughter of Pio Pico. And uh, that was a pretty smart move. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because with the help of his father-in-law, he began acquiring a lot of property in Orange County, before it was a county, obviously. 46,000 acre Rancho Mission Viejo y La Paz, and the smaller Rancho Tribuco that was just, just next to it. Down here you can see Ran Rancho Mission Vieja and Rancho Trabuco. So, he owned a lot of land, but then he went ahead and bought the Mission San Juan Capistrano for $710. It was a bargain. In gold and hides. And the Forster family lived on the mission grounds until 1864 when all the missions were returned uh, to the Catholic Church. At that time, Pio Pico was a gambler and, and needed money to pay off his gambling debt, so he acquired from his father in law. Rancho Santa Margarita y Las Flores, which is everything from here down to, to Oceanside. He now owned 200,000 acres, making him the largest landowner in the state. Of course, that was before it was a state. So, he had some problems with his ranch. The uh, California became a state, and the legislature passed some laws requiring that all the farmlands be fenced. So he now had to fence 200,000 acres. In addition, he had a problem like something, something similar to what Montecito and Santa Barbara have been experiencing the last couple of days, only it was two years of floods that just wiped out all the grasses that were needed to, uh, to, to feed all the cattle. So he went broke and turned around and sold it to an, another Irishman and uh, by, the, by the name of Richard O'Neill, who had grown up in County Cork in the heart of Ireland's dairy country. Dairy country. The potato famine caused his family to move to Canada, New Brunswick, just across the border from Maine, where they worked. And Richard's father was a skilled butcher. So you get the connection. Cattle country, his father was a butcher. When gold was discovered, young Richard O'Neill went around Cape, the Cape to California, 
to find his fortune in the Sacramento River. He didn't strike it rich, but he did set up a shop in San Francisco, a butcher shop. And there comes the joke. Do you know the joke about the two Irishmen that meet in a bar? Well, this, this actually happened. Richard O'Neill Jr. went to, was in a bar where he met James Flood. And James Flood was another Irishman who had to happen to have made a fortune operating mines on the Comstock load. And Flood was very impressed with O'Neill's knowledge of beef and of cattle, so he hired him to rescue se several faltering ranchos. And O'Neill was so successful that he persuaded Flood to put up the money to purchase ranchos Mission Viejo, Tribuco, and Santa Margarita in Las Flores by promising to serve as a resident manager of all of the ranches. All they did was shake hands. And Flood, they, they trusted each other. So he sent him down and after this gentleman's agreement, and it was understood that O'Neill, through sweat equity, would eventually become half owner of the entire um, combined mm -hmm. set of ranchos. And they had also, uh, along the way, uh, uh, wanted to purchase a couple of small ranchos that are in Riverside next, uh, joining these ranchos. So, O'Neill went to work. He came down here and he introduced new cattle breeds, such as the British Angus and the Herford, and new agricultural crops such as alfalfa and wheat. By 1907, Richard O'Neill had invested enough sweat equity to become half owner of more than 200,000 acres that stretched from Aliso Creek to Oceanside. And in the meantime, in 1941, uh, the United States government needed the Navy needed a, a place for West Coast training, and so they acquired the 122,000 Rancho Santa Margarita and Las Flores for this purpose. It became Camp Pendleton, of course. Members of the O'Neill family gave the name of the remaining part of the rancho, the, the part up here, they gave, the, that, this is uh, Richard O'Neill. Uh, they named that entire combined Ranch, Rancho Mission Viejo, and gave it the Raptor M brand. So, now you know that the land that we call Mission Viejo was part of that, uh, of those ranchos. In, this is Tony Moiso, who was the son of Richard O'Neill III, and uh, his sister is uh, Alice Avery, Alice Moiso Avery. There, once again, you have the ranchos. And you can see superimposed on here, Mission Viejo. Mission Viejo is that shaded area that looks like a, a gun holster. That's, a, the majority of it's in Rancho Tribuco and a small sliver at the bottom Rancho Mission Viejo. And of course this was still a cattle ranch. Now as urban sprawl began to creep down towards South Orange County, it was inevitable that, that people would want to come down and invest and develop the land. O'Neill's grandson, Dick O'Neill, decided to sell part of the land, the land that was closest to the newly built freeway, to, a, to Donald Brand, who ended up working now with the Irvine Company. And you can see that with that urban sprawl, it was obvious that this rancho was going to be developed and uh, Donald Brand was competing against other developers, but Donald Brand convinced 
the O'Neills, that they would take good care of the land, they would show reverence for the land and honor the Rancho heritage of the land in their design of, of the city. So they purchased, and this is the only off-ramp uh, that would lead into what is now Mission Viejo at that time, Avery Parkway. There was no Crown Valley or also or La Paz. The next one would be uh, El Toro. So here you see in the middle at the bottom is uh, Richard O'Neill III and right above him is Tony Moiso. And this is at the time of purchase. And here you see Dick O'Neill, Alice, and, and uh, Tony Moiso. And they definitely, and they were all, it was agreed that they would be general partners uh, on the board of directors. That, and that was another key to the sale. Donald Brand said, you can be partners on the board, so you can watch over. They, I think they had only 20%, but they were definitely there to watch over the development of, of Mission Viejo. What year was that? That was in 1963. I'm sorry, I should have mentioned that. 1963. Uh, that was a good year. That's when I graduated from high school. <laughs> so, the founders of the Mission Viejo Company conceived, designed, and built the entire community from scratch on 11,000 acres of vacant land out in the middle of nowhere. This is what it looked like. They created Mission Viejo twice, first on paper and then on the ground. They spent two years meticulously drawing up a comprehensive master plan providing for all the infrastructure facilities and amenities that a balanced self-contained community would need and then went right to work executing the plan. This is the original plan and it took one entire year to write. And I should tell you that what happened right at the beginning is that Donald Bren went to Santa Ana and knew somebody that was on the planning commission there by the name of Philip Riley. He asked Philip Riley to become one of the partners, one of his partners, and Philip Riley said, we're gonna need a planner, we're gonna drop a master plan, so he tapped the brand new head of the planning department of Santa Ana by the name of Jim Tepfer. So the three of them went down. At this time, Donald Brand had a restaurant and uh, or, or had a development over in Newport Beach and his office was above a restaurant. He threw the checkbook across the table to T Jim Tepfer and said, you can draw up the plan. You've got a year, draw up the plan and, here, and use whatever money you need. So Jim Tepfer went to work and what was once a sprawling cattle ranch in the, in the middle of nowhere was carefully transformed into a vibrant, healthy, world-class community of 93,000. And here's the community as it was being developed. Uh, you can see Lake Mission Viejo up in the, just above the middle and here it is almost all developed, but there's st still several areas that, that were undeveloped. So how did it all happen? The, the, the key was three visionaries who promised the O'Neill family they would respect the land, protect the environment, and preserve the ranch heritage. And then they kept their promise. That's why our motto in the city is the California promise, because you have one developer. You don't have a, a fly-by-night developer who says, oh, we're gonna put a lake here and golf courses and all that. They send you the property and then they leave and these things don't get developed. This developer was in it from the beginning to the end. One developer for the entire community, not just for one, one housing tract or one area. The key was having three geniuses who promised all future residents, including generations yet unborn that they would see their magnificent master plan through to completion. This is, this is Phil Riley, and this is Jim Tepfer. 
later sent by the Mission Viejo Company up to Aurora, Colorado to create another Mission Viejo up there, which is actually bigger than Mission Viejo and, uh, and yet has all the characteristics of Mission Viejo. Putting the beautiful in Mission Viejo took a lot of ingredients. That all and it all added up. It was no accident. It was a master plan that worked. What took place in nine, from 1963 to 1993, when the community was in, essentially built out in 1993 is when I was mayor, was the result of innovative planning, groundbreaking market research. I could talk for an hour on the market research that they did and, and how ingenious it was. Inventive designing, progressive building, environmentally sensitive landscaping, imaginative <coughs> advertising. Just wonderful ad advertising that was in all of the, the Time magazines and in the LA uh, Sunday Times and, and billboards. And, uh, and creative financing. Here was a billboard that you could see as you drove down, as, as you were approaching the orange groves in, Tus in uh, Tustin. The company's marketing program was so successful that families camped out for days on the street for the opportunity to enter a lottery to put down money on a home. And the first homes there were $23,000. The company showed respect for the ranch by using Spanish early California ranch. Uh, here's an example of the lottery. <clears throat> and they're, they're, that morning they may only sell 30 homes. There may be only 30 and look at all the people that are hoping to win that lottery. So they used Spanish and mission motifs in their landscaping and architectural features. <clears throat> They showed reverence for the land, and this is important, by res preserving the rolling hills topography. They didn't want it to become flat. They wanted to maintain the hills, which is very expensive to develop homes. And, and the open spaces, maintaining the open spaces, and by landscaping all the slopes and medians with the typical Mission Bell street <coughs> line. The company honored the Spanish heritage by giving every homeowner a scroll with a chain of title tracing ownership back to the King of Spain. The result was community identity, a sense of place. The company ensured that quality facilities were quickly built and uh, quickly developed. Remember, this is Mission Viejo. You, all the people that were buying the first homes there had to come up to Tustin for elementary school and high school. They had to come up to Tustin to buy bread. And so they were, they were taking a, a, a gamble when they bought a home there because Mission Viejo Company said, don't worry, we'll have everything you need here in the it, soon enough. We'll have churches and stores and schools and everything. So they... Installed. This is Mission Viejo High School, and the Mission Viejo Company said, told the Tustin Unified School District, you build a high school and we will build a stadium, which they did. And uh, the fire station, the first fire station, I, I'm on the Planning Commission, we just approved demolishing this and putting in a brand new, larger fire station that's going to be beautiful. Uh, a branch library a cultural resource center where they actually had the fossils that had been dug up and, and encased in, uh, uh, and, and preserved. Churches and parks and shops, a hospital, medical centers, a mall, and the college. And I could talk for an hour on how they got the, the com community college district to choose Mission Viejo over others that were competing for that. So, in addition, the company built world-class amenities, golf courses, 
recreation centers. There's the first golf course, which the city just purchased, by the way, Costa del Sol Golf Course is now also Creek Golf Course. And of course, they build recreation centers, an equestrian center, bike paths, sports fields, a bowling alley, a skateway, and the lake. The net result, and the lake was not cheap, it was $30 million, but by that time Philip Morris had, had acquired Mission Vehicle Company and so they had, they had a deep pocket to rely on. The net result was community pride, a sense of beauty. One, one thing that they insisted upon is that their employees live in Mission Viejo. They wanted that their employees to work on everything in Mission Viejo as if they lived there, because they did. The Mission Viejo then decided to foster a hometown feeling, the small hometown feeling from the beginning. It started a home beautiful committee and they would award different residents each month for having done excellent for excellence in landscaping. They had the Mission Bells hand each new resident a huge welcome binder, binder with all the information they would need. They published the Mission Viejo Reporter. The Mission Viejo Company did and this kept all the citizens up to date on, on the upcoming events and activities and, and what was happening and, and made them feel like they were part of a community. It created the activities committee and sponsored annual community events such as the Rancho Days and uh, the, the St. Patrick's Day Parade, uh, Bunny Days, the 1,000 foot banana split, the 4th of July picnic, which was held on the golf course before it went over to the, uh, by the lake, and the balloon to the moon contest. These would, these would end up somewhere in Indio or Palm Springs or Arizona, and the, if you got a postcard that was sent to you from the farthest away place, you won a prize. Okay, so... <coughs> So you can begin to see that Mission Viejo is magical by design because they, there was a sense of belonging there, a sense of, of, of community spirit. And I, I should mention that when you, when you moved into your new home, they wanted all the streets to have the same tree, the same olive tree, because they're creating a Mediterranean southern. So they would take you to the nursery and say, you pick the tree and we'll plant it. And they, you got to pick trees that were higher than the ceiling, and they would plant it for you. And the 1,000th purchaser, every 1,000 purchases of a home, received a cat, a, a large cattle. And they actually took it by row up to the front door and said, this is your cattle. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. <laughs> and of course they would take that to the butcher and, ha and so they, now they had beef for, for a year. What if the people were vegan? Nobody moved to Mission Viejo if they were vegan. <laughs> so this is, this is uh, the live nativity and then we participated in other things. The annual Rose Parade float. We sponsored a Rose Parade, well Mission Viejo company paid for that too for six, I think six or seven years. And uh, they, they won lots of awards. And the whole world looked to Mission Viejo as we hosted the 1984 Summer Olympics road race. So we definitely had community spirit in our city on that day. So, so as you walk along the paths of Mission Viejo, which we consider our yellow brick road, it says, color me beautiful. It's a place where everything you like about California is everywhere you look, where you can live the California promise. Here's another billboard. That's why we like to say it's so nice to have Mission Viejo around the house. <laughs> so the company laid a strong foundation for cityhood. At Build Out, the company dissolved knowing it had delivered on the California promise and had developed a world-class community without losing its hometown field. It was ready to turn the reins over to the city 
and the residents were ready to wrest control over their own destiny away from the county. The political evolution from unincorporated community into cityhood started in 74 when the local residents passed a referendum to create a MAC, which was an elected five-member advisory board to the County Board of Supervisors on planning, traffic, parks, schools, budgetary, and safety issues on behalf of the residents. This was had been created by the California legislature saying, if you're in an unincorporated area, but you want to have more voice in local control, local decisions, you can create a municipal advisory council. And Mission Viejo was one of the first ones to take advantage of that law. However, in 1985, the county notified the Mission Viejo MAC that it would not no longer financially support the MAC and that it intended to levy a special benefit assessments on all the property tax bills. Does that sound familiar? To pay for county services. Well, we knew that we were a donor community. We were sending more in, in, our, in our property tax money to Santa Ana than the benefits we were receiving. So, we filed a stern protest with the county and proposed that we, perform, um, that we form a community services district as an interim step towards incorporation, which we did. Keeping our own taxes, and we, want, we could handle our own parks, slopes, medians, lights, and sweeping, just parks, okay? Not all municipal services, but just parks and, and street lights and slopes and, meet and sweeping. And this is, the, this is the MAC, the original MAC. John Noble's there in the middle, Catherine Foley, Gary Stoney back there. That's the Municipal Advisory Council. Then, we, as I said, we formed the Community Services District and all of those that were elected, that was an elected position now, um, were also members of the Mission Viejo MAP. So these two, and that was in 1987. I'm there on the left uh, sitting down with, with the glasses on the far left. So, the, the residents voted overwhelmingly to form the CSD and elected these five directors. But two years later, the CSD decided we're an ideal launching platform for cityhood. So immediately we did and in, in conducted a feasibility study to see if we could survive as a city. And in, but in, in the meantime, in two years, we entered into a joint use agreement with the school districts, appro approved a master plan of parks and recreation, developed two new parks, oversaw the construction of our new community center, and built up a reserve of $4 million. So after the feasibility study demonstrated that we would definitely be solvent as a, as a city, the CSD applied to LAFCO to incorporate within the same boundaries as the Mission Viejo planned community text that Jim Tepfer had created uh, 15 years earlier. Over the strenuous objection of all the neighboring communities who wanted us to form one giant Saddleback City. So imagine it would be Laguna Hills, Lake Forest, Laguna Niguel, uh, maybe Laguna Woods. All of these would be one Saddleback City. We wanted to have maintain our own identity. Our petition was granted and it was placed on the ballot. This is our community center design before it was built. And on the left there is our first mayor, Norm Murray. And here are the articles about the, the cityhood drive, petition drive and how the valley, entire Saddleback Valley wants to include Mission Viejo as part of a, a Saddleback city. To be a city or not, that was the question on the ballot. And the voters chose cityhood by a margin of 57 to 43%. So, the reason we became a city is mainly to retain the taxes that we were sending to the county and which the county was using to subsidize projects and services in other areas and to have a direct voice and obtain local control 
over planning, safety, and all municipal services. So that metamorph metamorphosis was complete from MAC to CSD to city, and after the metamorphosis, a beautiful butterfly emerged. <laughs> After the company had passed the torch to the city 30 years ago, the flame began to burn even brighter. This is the incorporation day. You can see on the left, uh, the Mayor Norm Murray, Chris Keena, Victoria Jaffe, Bob Curtis, and Bill Craycraft, the first council being sworn in. And they, uh, I could t talk to you an hour about what they did that day, Norm, was raced in a police car to John Wayne, flew in a private airplane, Piper Cub, all the way to Sacramento in order to sign the documents in order for us to grab three months of taxes. If he, if he didn't, this was March 31st, 19, 1988. And if he didn't get there by 3.30 on that afternoon in Sacramento, then all of the taxes for the first quarter were gonna go to the county. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So, what I want to say is that the Founding Fathers had, some, had that same brave spirit that had pervaded in this territory when Portola marched through in the 1540s, the same pioneer spirit that had been shown by Forster and O'Neill, and the same visionary spirit that had been demonstrated by Brand and company. The Imagineering kicked into high gear when we became a city in 88. This is the first council at the lake. That's our beloved uh, brand. And then this was the second council. Uh, this was two years later. During that first two year uh, period, I was the chairman of the city's first planning commission. We created the general plan. And then I'm on the right up there. I, I know you don't recognize me. <laughs> That's me. So the idea was that the, the city wanted to improve on what it had been bequeathed by the Mission Vehicle Company. And they did. The attitude was you built us a great house, but now we want to remodel it and upgrade it. So we took what they had given us and we began to improve it. You can see that our city seal includes the Mission Vehicle brand on the left and the Olympic flame on the right for obvious reasons. So, <coughs> what's, what's there? There we go. So, this positive proactive approach yielded spectacular award-winning results in every aspect. The city shifted into the high gear and went from good to better to best. You can see that the first thing we did was to take our community center and expand it, renovate it. This is what it looks like now. And this is what it looks like in, in parts of, part of it inside. <coughs> We wanted to meet the needs of the ever-increasing senior population with terraces on the outside and, and a huge parking lot. We added a tribute to our war veterans and war heroes at the entrance to that center. Before cityhood, all stray dogs and cats had been taken to the local animal shelter. And I think in the city area, area of the city, uh, and uh, they were all euthanized within 30 days, even if you couldn't make the long trek up to, up to uh, Santa Ana to find your dog or cat. No matter how healthy it was, it was euthanized. So we detached from the county and formed our own animal services. This is what we built, and it is functioning so well, this state-of-the-art animal, animal shelter, that now we contract out and do all the animal services for Aliso Viejo, Luna <coughs> Miguel, and Santa Margarita. And we have a pro-life, pro-adoption policy, <coughs> which serves four adjoining cities. Before cityhood, we had, and this is also the animal shelter, 
Before City Hood, we had a tiny 9,000 square foot library. We broke away from the county library district, acquired the land at the center of the city, Marguerite and La Paz, and built our own independent uh, 25,000 square foot library with beautiful design. And a few years later, we expanded it to 40,000 square feet. And then we added the children's reading room. Uh, you can't see, but on the, we wanted to recreate the past for the children. We wanted them to see that this used to be farmland, this used to be ranch land. And we, they're sitting on crates, and on, behind us you have all, remember the, the, the crate labels? with all the beautiful artwork done for crate labels. The entire wall on this side is, consists of those crate labels. This was our first city hall, it was leased. This is our second city hall, it was leased. We decided to build our own civic center right across from the library and this is it. And this was all in the center of our city and then we decided uh, to televise our, televise our meetings to the public this is also City Hall. And the, this is the council chamber. And uh, I'm proud of this design because in some places where you go, there's an aloofness. You know, the council is above the residents and looking down on the residents. And here they're not. They're all seen eye to eye. And then we have our mm -hmm. TV studios also. And we're, I've done, I've conducted oral interviews of 10 of the original Mission Viejo Company executives. If you want to learn how to do oral history, <laughs> talk to me. Uh, each, each one of these interviews were six hours. And they, have all been, they were all videotaped and they're available on our library's website. And we have transcriptions of all of them. This is the TV studio. In addition, before cityhood, we had 42 parks. Now we have 54 parks. And they're, they're spectacular everywhere you go. They're just very well designed. And I'm going through these rather quickly. This is the one named uh, after Florence Griffith Joyner. This is on Olympiad, which we renamed O'Neill Street. We named it Olympiad, and we called um, the, the uh, Tony Moiso and the, and the uh, Santa Margarita Company, if, if it would be okay for them if we removed the O'Neill name, and they said, well, please do that because we want to use that name for a street in Santa Margarita. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we, we, this, this part is dedicated to all of the Olympians that have come from Mission Viejo, including our present mayor, Brian Goodell. Now, before cityhood, here's, this is the part of Olympiad Park. Here's a skateboard park. I remember we had a, a meeting that lasted till two in the morning in order to, uh, to pass this and, and get it going because everybody was worried about liability. And, and this is our own dog park. It's very popular. The dogs have the best view of anybody here. They, they can see out over the entire O'Neill Regional Park. You can see that, and this is a park especially designed for the, for uh, people, uh, children with adaptive, you know, with uh, that have special needs and need adaptive play equipment. It's right next to a school that also is a magnet school for disabled kids. That's, and then of course we have trails. So we we. We have the golf club, the Mission Viejo Golf Club, and the Costa del Sol Golf Club. But then we saw the oversaw the development of, and this is the Mission Viejo Country Club. We saw oversaw the development of the Arroyo Tribuco Golf Club, which is still owned by the Santa Margarita Company today. And the Mission Viejo Country Club has been completely renovated. Before city, cityhood, we had several parks, but no defined trails to speak of. But then after cityhood, we embarked on an ambitious program, 15-year project to create pastoral and peaceful Oso Creek Trail 
in collaboration with thousands of volunteers who would come out by the hundreds and thousands to plant on Saturdays, plant the, uh, the uh, bushes and plants on all the slopes. This was all barren before. And all of this has been planted by volunteers. And the volunteers have also done the mosaics. And this is an obelisk that later became copper plated. It was, it's just beautiful. There's a labyrinth down there that was developed. Uh, more mosaics. And, and there's a whale because it, to remind us of our, our prehistoric past. So all of this has been done with using uh, recycled water in all our parks, on all our slopes, all our medians. Those are the first so solar panels in Mission Viejo on some of the first model homes. Uh, they were there when I moved to Mission Viejo in 1976. And of course, you can see that we started with small plant materials. But then uh, that has all flourished now, and it's very green. Actually, the solar panel that we have on City Hall is, uh, supplies most of the electricity for City Hall, and the, the, the solar panels on the mall are the largest in the county. And we, we pride ourselves in using drought-tolerant plants and um, water that is recycled. So of course we always had the, the lake, even before cityhood, the iconic crown jewel of our community. But after cityhood, the association has continued to enhance and improve that resource with the addition of this clubhouse and the help came from the city to help design this promenade along Alicia so that people could stroll along this part of uh, the south end of the, of the uh, lake and uh, and enjoy and sit on benches. And we just installed a new promenade on the other side. I live in one of those condos that you can see up on the upper right there. Uh, what was it? Oh, and because of the upcoming droughts, we were concerned about whether we would have enough water always in the lake. And uh, so, across Alicia Parkway, just south of, of this, of this uh, sidewalk, we built an advanced purified water plant that receives recycled water, purifies it, and pumps it into the lake. So we have assured water in perpetuity, and it's recycled water. And this is the, uh, the groundbreaking for that uh, advanced purified water facility. Of course, we have, we consider ourselves to be one of the safest cities in the state. This is our emergency control center. And of course, many other things have happened uh, that, uh, that we're proud of. We have improvements at, uh, at the mall and inside the mall, completely redone, completely re renovated. And this is Kaleidoscope, and this is another center that's going in with a new hotel. This is the rec center now that had been improved. This is Montañoso Rec Center. Sierra Rec Center has been completely redone. And the city has four rec centers. And we also have the lake and three golf courses. This is uh, the tennis center. That's the tennis pavilion up there. And this is our, we've completely redone the Natador swimming complex. This is a brand new diving platform. And this is what it looks like at night. These, the, the rec centers were lovely, but they were run down. They were functional, but they didn't sparkle like we wanted them to. So we've completely redone them. And we've added the walk again, we've continued with many of the activities that we had in the past. This is the YMCA next to one of the rec centers. Now this is our walk against drugs, which we do every, um, every October. And it comes from Mission Viejo High School and they all walk down La Paz and go all the way to the community park and they 
meet with all of the first responders and uh, and are uh, with many other community groups. It, in addition, we we have had. This is the volunteers that I'm talking about that are doing some of the planning. This is the chalk festival. This is Arts Alive. This is a Readers Festival. This is Authors Presents. The, in commemoration of our 25th anniversary, we decided to come up with another float that would be sponsored by the city and built by the residents, as usual. I mean, Mission Hill Company, when they paid for the design of a float, they got busloads of high school students to go up there every year for seven years to, to build those floats. This time, volunteers went up and built this one, when this one was just a, few, not, just a few years ago. And you can see some of our Olympians. You can see Julie Foudy there, and Brian Goodell over there on the left, and Greg Luganis, the diver. Anyway, and that was a functioning uh, pool of water as they went down Colorado Boulevard. They were actually diving into the, into the water. We have wheelchair tennis. Uh, they come from all over the world to compete here. Uh, and we have the Special Olympics, the Relay for Life, the Triathlon, and Memorial Day tributes to the fallen, our own American heroes. Now you know that we sponsor the 84 Olympic bicycle road races uh, back, back in 1984. And to commemorate that, we installed at the finish line, which is right in front of the lake, I mean, we installed on Olympiad Parkway a finish line uh, right in front of the lake where you can see the bicycle up there at the top of that pedestal or that pole. This is the actual finish line for that, uh, for that uh, road race. And we're like, we already have an Olympic committee to have delegations coming from other parts of the world that we should be able for this 2028 Olympics in Los Angeles. We also built, and this park commemorates that road race as well. This is the dedication of our World Cup Soccer Center back in 1994. I was able to get the World Cup, our, our men's national soccer team, in preparation for the 1995, 1994 World Cup, which was held in the United States, I was able to get them to come to Mission Viejo and train in Mission Viejo for two years. We were competing against Texas and Florida, and we went out because we flew the coach over and his wife and uh, convinced him that this is the best place you want to live. And you and he he said yes. I want this to be the place for the center, and so we had the. Uh, the dedication. That's the actual World Cup, and I'm there with Alan Rothenberg uh, on the day that we dedicated it. We also have many entertainment venues, galleries in the library, art. This is Carl St. Clair, you know, in the specific symphony. We, the symphony comes to Mission Viejo every summer, and we and they perform. <coughs> And this concert is for free for all the residents. We have 6,000 people that show up for, these com com for this concert in the summer. And this is Shakespeare Under the Stars. And of course, these are, these are more volunteers because, you know, when it gets right down to it, uh, a city is much more than brick and mortar. It's more than slopes and parks and streets and medias. It is, its success is derived from the vision and spirit and commitment of the pioneer builders and the hometown settlers and the myriads of volunteers through the years. This is the Pataki Center for the Arts. And you can see that even on, on our streets we have digital artwork that changes every month. This is a uh, one of the original whale fossils, which we have preserved there. This is our local history room, where I'm work, at work writing a new book on the history of Mission Viejo, that part of that Arcadia Images of America uh, series. Uh, this is our, our, our own heritage house for our heritage committee, our history committee. 
meets in this house and we have docents who conduct tours. This is our local history section in the library. And of course, we're continually at work to try to upgrade our streets and we, um, we put the train station where Ga Gavilan Station used to be halfway between San This is Dennis Wilberg, our city manager, Keith Rattay, and the Chamber of Commerce. Now, I want you to notice that this park in the center of, 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 of Mission Viejo is, is a place for you to get away. It's, it's part of the character and identity and spirit of Mission Viejo. We have places where you can get away and feel like you're out in, in the countryside. And it's right in the middle of Mission Viejo. These are some of the volunteers that work so hard. This is, uh, of course, the, uh, the uh, 4th of July. This is a quilt that I commissioned to be sewn. It hangs in the library and shows many of the events and, and activities that we're proud of in Mission Viejo, our city hall. Now I want to end by telling you uh, something that I, I, I feel strongly about. There are places in Mission Viejo where you can walk all day and hardly encounter nary a soul. As the world grows up around us, our precious open spaces, the lands left wild or carefully curated into places that encourage us to slow down a little, call out for us to come to them more than they ever have before. The wild lands remain here because master planning and planned community and balanced community requires the preservation of large areas of undisturbed land for plants and animals to thrive and for people to enjoy. Uh, this is along the Arroyo uh, Los Alisos, Los Alisos Creek. We have, we're blessed with three arroyos, three creeks in Mission Viejo. Los Alisos, Oso, and Tribuco. And we live in a time when the first much different from when the first cattle hands arrived and lived here. But we have the same need to feel the cool breezes that caress the ridge tops, to hear the owls cooing back and forth, and the wolves baying to the moon, to smell the gooseberries, to see deer scampering up and down the slopes to elude a puma. And we have, down, down in there we have deer and we have mountain lions. Indeed, we need these wild places now more than ever. So it's important to leave these areas teeming with wildlife along creek beds. Jim Tepfer's most important and lasting contribution to the community was this. It wasn't creating the master plan community in the middle of nowhere, which is important enough because it's the most successful plant community in America. But rather, he seized a rare opportunity to conserve and preserve precious wildlife habitat in the middle of the suburbia that he was designing. The truth is that master planning is a matter of determining not only where to build, but where not to build what land to develop, and what land not to develop. The real question is always whether, not whether to build, but how much to build and how much to leave open space. The pivotal choice is not no growth versus slow growth, but no growth versus limited growth because we all still want to ride for the brand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob. That was great. You're welcome. Thank you. I apologize.
apologize for the technical difficulties up front. We, but we would have ended a little bit earlier. <laughs> That's, That's okay. okay. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to make a, a few other comments. Um, one, um, we do have a, a box at the back there near the door. Uh, it's a five dollars suggested donation for non-members. But the good news is membership for the entire year is only thirty dollars. And if you are not already a member, you can take care of that at the back table there, uh, and um, they can uh, get you signed up. And it's thirty dollars for the year, but there are also discounts for students or seniors. So. It's uh, pretty affordable and you get the county courier 10 times a year and you get discounts on events like our upcoming annual dinner and so forth. So um, uh, uh, Daniel or Lynn can help you back there. And speaking of Lynn, I, I wanted to thank Lynn. She is, uh, she is uh, one of our uh, uh, longest serving and most dedicated uh, uh, volunteers and board members for the society for a long time. And, She's, she is not walking away from the board and, and so much of the great stuff she does for us, but she is going to take, uh, she is going to pass along the duty of selling books. And so I want to thank you for all of the books you've sold and hauled and organized and priced and everything else for years now. Um, and, uh, and I will point you to, uh, from now on at meetings, if you want to talk to uh, Daniel uh, Treudel, one of our newer board members, he will be, uh, he will be taking that over. So um, thank you both. Um, and thank you all for coming tonight. And uh, do help yourself. We've got some uh, goodies in the back and uh, refreshments. And uh, I uh, hope to see you all. And uh, I hope to see you all next month. So thank you very much.